Been cruising the Blue Ridge Parkway for the last two weeks. Today is actually two weeks since we got on. Two weeks. Oh my gosh, this has yeah. been such a great trip and such an incredible, incredible highway driving experience. God, I recommend this to anyone who travels, who who <laughs> loves to drive, who loves to be on the road or I think exploring this country because it's beautiful. Because this is driving as art. <laughs> it is. No okay. billboards, no slow, commercial vehicles, and the slow speed limits, very little traffic, and just a beautiful, sinuous road going through the mountains with every piece of it, every mile of it designed to have beauty as your view, not houses or buildings, and buildings or, or anything. And the only buildings you see are old cabins. So they've restored and kept <laughs> historic. Yes. Um, so the story of the Blue Ridge Parkway starts back in the Great Depression and it was part of the New Deal to get people back to work and to create something and preserve part of the Appalachian experience. <laughs> yes. um, there is fascinating history on it. We've watched some great documentaries yeah. on it. Highly recommend going and looking at some of those because just the way this came together, it was yep. originally intended to be a five-year project to put together. <laughs> it <laughs> wasn't actually completed until the mid-80s. Yeah, but most of it was done in the 50s, but yeah, but by the 50s. But it started, yeah, it, uh, FDR had a vision of let's connect the end of Shenandoah National Park um, up in Virginia with the Great Smoky Mountain National Park um, down in North Carolina with this a road and make this a project and, and actually put a landscape architect in charge of like, let's make this something beautiful and let's put a lot of people to work in the process. And it paid off. It, it worked. It, it, the Blue Ridge Parkway is something amazing. Now, going uh, in an RV, first of all. Large RVs, not recommended. Yeah. And by large, I mean, even 30 foot would be considered large on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, I'd say 25 is more the ideal range. Maybe a little bit on either side if you're really good about driving, backing tight roads. <laughs> uh, the reasons why, there are 26 tunnels along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Most of them are tall enough for most RVs, but some of them on the southern end actually are uh, like pretty... Like one I think. So you're getting down into some close call territory. Underneath the uh, legal length. So if yeah. you've got a... Um, Call RV. Yeah, not going to work. And uh, a lot of the, there are over 200 places to get on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Some of them nice and roads. easy. Some of them are twisty, turny, little hairpin dirt roads that are not RV appropriate. So definitely research how you get on yeah. to and, the Blue Ridge Parkway. And just if you were driving a bigger RV, you would be white knuckling it. And everybody around you would be white knuckling it and or just annoyed Frustrated. because you're there. So fortunately, you know, there's very little traffic. Most people seem to pay attention to that. We saw like only two or three big RVs on attempting, the, on, attempting the Blue Ridge. And I think a lot of those tried it a little bit, tried to get into their first campground and bailed. Yeah. So talking about the campgrounds, there are eight official national park run campgrounds along the Blue Ridge Parkway. They're all no hookup. Uh, they all have dump stations. They all have water, fresh water that you can get at the station and sometimes some spigots yeah, around. They, they all have bathrooms, but only two of them have showers. Right. They're all, all flush bathrooms. So yeah. there's and there's uh, running water at them all. Uh, the sites, however, are <laughs> challenging. challenging. They so, were <laughs> built in the 50s. So all these parks are only $20 a night if you do the first come, first serve side of them. But it, that we recommend don't reserve, do first come, first serve because the sites are, unless you're tenting, are incredibly challenging. A lot of them are super unlevel. A lot of them are very, very small. Only a few of them, very, very few of them, can handle a larger RV. So, um, most the, about half the sites are reservable online, um, and at least half are first come, first serve. And a lot of them aren't reserved online, so you can snag those last minute as well when you arrive. Most of them have a ranger station at the front who can help direct you to sites that are Level appropriate, <laughs> levelish for your RV. It is uh, for a van because we're traveling in our 21 foot Travato. 
Uh, sometimes they allow them in the tent no generator area. Sometimes they're considered an RV and we have to go to the trailer side. And even if the sign says it was a t van side, sometimes you yeah. get to the ranger station and say, oh no, that was for vans in the 50s that were 12 feet. I've never seen a 12 foot long van, yeah. but that's what we were so, told. They were <laughs> for old school vans, not these we, larger ones. So yeah, we had a lot of very inconsistent. We had some rangers say, you should definitely go. If you're not going to run a generator, go to the tent site. It'll be quieter. There's some level sites down there. There's some level sites. Others are saying, nope, you're not allowed over here. You got to go over on the RV side or the, the, the trailer side. Um, and A lot of these campgrounds, it's little car parking sections that were meant for tent campers or small pop-ups or something and they're not angled the right way to back into so even if you find a level site it's like you can't get your rv turned around to back into it you either have to pull forward which isn't ideal in ours we like our back window in the yep. privacy because that's where our bed is um so it, it's really hard sometimes to find a level site that is back in that is back in appropriate and in the rv and land. Generators are kind of the one downside. I mean, these are some of the most beautiful tree-covered, tranquil campgrounds you could ever run across. And for, on our trip, they were almost all mostly deserted. Even on the weekends, they were only like third half full for most of them. But then you have somebody come in and crank up the contractor generator and everybody just plugs their ears. And unlike other national parks, which have uh, like just a like limited generator, generator hours. hours the generator hours across the entire blue ridge parkway are 8 a.m till 9, 9 p.m and we actually ran into one campground where i think our neighbor actually thought that meant you had to run your generator exactly <laughs> from 8 a.m till 9 p.m and yes. you ran it all day long that was a little annoying thankfully it was a quieter one yeah but, yeah, uh, but the normal reason you run a generator all day long is for air conditioning but that, that's the joy of traveling on the blue ridge parkway is it is you're up on the mountains it is cool it's about as cool as you can get on the east coast it's been pleasant we've not needed air yeah. conditioning. Only when we've gone back down into towns where it's back at level, sea level, where it's warmer, have we needed the air conditioner. Yeah. Oh, connectivity. Uh, of course, you important. know, that's we're mobile and connected. That's our day job is running the Mobile Internet <laughs> Resource Center. And of course, we're working on this trip, so we needed connectivity. And we also used the opportunity to test a lot of stuff. Yeah, so uh, Along the Blue Ridge Parkway driving it, you're probably going to have single at most of the overlooks, and there are a lot of overlooks. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. Enough to check email, yeah. stay on top of things. Uh, as you're driving, your your GPS is going to get enough signal to keep connected. Uh, there's only a few spots where we had absolutely no signal as we were driving. Yeah, but this is you know incredibly remote, incredibly rural area. It's, if the road was designed to go where there's nothing else, and so there's not a lot of cell towers, and we had to break out all of our bag of tricks to get connected um, at the various campgrounds. And we, we got some actually pretty good performance. In fact, I have one particular campground, um, the Doton, 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 Park. Doton Park campground, I got my fastest ever uh, 4G speed of almost 300 megabits per second recorded. So, wow. But I'm, I'm having to play with boosters and antennas and, and bonding, bonding and, and multiple carriers and all this different gear. And what worked was different in each place. And in some places, like particularly Linville Falls, basically, even with all of our gear, the best we can do is send out a few text messages. So On it AT varies. Uh, AT&T seems to be the best carrier across the board along the entirety of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm -hmm. Verizon, some places, one out. And I think we actually have some places where T-Mobile Sprint. T-Mobile did okay. But yeah, but, yeah. but for the most part, this has not been great T-Mobile territory or Sprint territory. Yeah. Um, AT and T is the if you need to pick one, AT and T is the one. Here. There are I think they said over two hundred and fifty pullouts. Yes, with lots of places, and stuff. more pullouts, not enough time to do them all. But definitely take the time to go and look at them if you do the parkway. Even if you can't take the time to do the entirety of it in one shot like or well, most yeah. of one shot like we're doing, um, do pieces of it if you're if it's yeah. on your route. Yeah. Uh, it's a great alternative if you just want to get up the east coast and you're not on a time schedule. Yeah. It is not fast. It's all 45 miles per hour. And is more the top practical speed is you're going to be going 35 miles an hour a lot of the time just because of the... the and, it, and, it, and that makes it so relaxing to drive as long as you're not driving something big. Is you're just cruising at 35 miles an hour, no traffic, gentle curves. The road is mostly in really great condition. And, you know, if you get someone behind you... Just pull well, off. There, there's going to be an overlook in like two seconds. Um, pull <laughs> off, let them go past, and it's a much more pleasurable experience if you have no one in front of you and no one behind you, and that's mm -hmm. easy to do most of the way. Uh, there are a lot of bicyclists who are doing this. They're hardcore. They are hardcore, <laughs> crazy, uh, but inspiring. Um, They'll be, pass you on the downhills. <laughs> but you know, when you need to pass them, uh, you know, be careful of those curves and getting around and making sure you have a clear passage out there. Mm -hmm. So because there's not a lot of shoulder room in a lot of these areas. Um, but they're, you know, the, 
It is a recreational thing, and uh, it is art. Road it is as art. Beautiful. They say it's life changing. I don't know if my life has changed for it, but I'm, I'm certainly so mega chilled. It has been chilling. It's been a great escape. There's been there's there's summer happening in the rest of the country, and we have not needed air conditioning for weeks, basically. So if you get the opportunity, do the Blue Ridge Parkway. It is a unique thing. We create these videos just for fun, and we love having you along for the ride. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.